What really happened to the largest hidden treasure ever found? Was Captain Black Samuel really one of the wealthiest pirates in the Caribbean at the apex of piracy? Join us as we delve into the intriguing story of Captain Samuel Bellamy, his crew, and their thrilling sea adventures. Privateers learned the trade craft necessary to succeed as pirates following the lengthy, omnipresent 18th century conflicts. Most braves and pirates at least acknowledged the concept of legal privateering in their speeches. This was probably merely an attempt to shield oneself from the unlikely event of any examination by carrying an outdated or worthless permit. The War of Spanish Succession, 1703-13, however, saw the rise of a new breed of pirates. These individuals abandoned religious and patriotic leadership and spied on sailors of all nationalities at their whim. They had been driven by the futility of the conflict and the allure of the riches to be obtained. Samuel Bellamy, Thomas II, and Henry Avery were just a few founders of this group. The Prince of Pirates, Black Bellamy and Robin Hood of the Sea, such epithets were appropriate for Samuel Bellamy given the dramatic nature of his brief career as a pirate commander. Among all publications, Forbes magazine has ranked Black Sam as the richest pirate in history. Given that Bellamy's whole career as a pirate lasted only a little over a year, this is astonishing. So who was Samuel Bellamy, and how did his brief period as a pirate come to have such a big impact? According to archives, Samuel Bellamy was born on February 23, 1689, to a low-income family in the west of England's Hillslay Hamlet, close to Dartmoor. But we are aware that his mother passed away when he was very young, and that by the time he was in his adolescence, Samuel had left for one of England's port towns with the intention of becoming a sailor. At first learning to sail, Bellamy joined the British Royal Navy in 1715 and was an experienced officer. Samuel Bellamy enlisted in the Royal Navy at a young age and took part in several naval engagements. Throughout this period, Bellamy traveled to the known world. Life in the British Navy was challenging and often unappreciative. The residents of Cape Cod, which is located on the Atlantic coast in southeast Massachusetts, continue to tell this heartbreaking love tale. It is about Samuel Bellamy, a young guy who was wonderfully gorgeous and desired to wed the love of his life, but her parents opposed her union with a common sailor. Bellamy is said to have had a relationship with a Hallett's surnamed lady in New England. Both the depth of their relationship and Hallett's first name, which is often given as Mariah, are in question. Samuel then informed his girlfriend that he would go to the Caribbean and would only return affluent. Then, Black Sam Bellamy rose to prominence as history's richest pirate. Some people think that the two had a kid. According to some traditions, Hallett was banished from her homeland because of the child's careless, accidental death while Bellamy was abroad. The existence of their love child, the authenticity of these traditions, and Hallett's destiny are all constrained to the world of conjecture, which is terrible. Samuel Bellamy, popularly known as Black Sam, served as one of the most skilled pirates in the Caribbean at the height of piracy, but the abandonment of the biggest pirate treasure ever lost with him three centuries ago tarnished his name. Myths about Samuel Bellamy His nickname, Black Sam Bellamy, is said to have come from a novel by Elizabeth Renard. Therefore, it is not more than a hundred years old. According to local mythology, Black Sam was a kind-hearted pirate in the mold of Robin Hood, and his nickname, Black Sam, was given to him because of his jet-black hair, not because he was a bad person. There is no evidence that he ever went by the name Black Sam Bellamy or participated in charitable work throughout his lifespan. And then, there isn't much solid proof of his acts at all. Also, it is widely believed that he was the most prosperous pirate ever. He's not the first pirate to apply directly to this title. Ching Shi of China also says so, and she has supporting documentation. This assertion is based on the tale of his ship, Ouida, and their stolen cargo. Sam Bellamy and the Ouida in 1715, the Ouida Galley was constructed as a slave cruise. It was captured by the pirate Sam Bellamy and his gang in 1717, not long after it had left Jamaica. Bellamy and his troop spent a year using the Ouida to attack other ships around the eastern shore of the American colonies after recognizing a good raiding ship when he spotted one. A pirate may plunder and attack as much as a ship can handle, but if the loot is not turned into money that has worth to him, it won't mean anything to him. Without the booze and the ladies, how else would he and the crew pay for them? A strong storm formed during the night of April 26, 1717, off the Massachusetts coast of Cape Cod. Luida sailed through gusts of up to 70 miles per hour, 
112 kilometers per hour, and surf up to 30 feet, 9 meters. The ship suddenly rammed stern first onto a beach and disintegrated. When Mariah Hallett was probably not waiting for Sam, it sank north of Wellfleet. Reports suggest that just two of the 146 passengers were still alive. They weren't Sam Bellamy either. Nonetheless, they were pirates who were reluctant to come forward to authorities, even after surviving a disaster. A treasure hunting frenzy started when a single of the survivors said the Ouida had 180 bags of gold and silver. Samuel Shute, the colonial governor, dispatched a recovery team after much delay, only to discover at least 200 men searching the shoreline for lost gold. Sam Bellamy was missing. Where was the crash, too? Does it actually hold the 50-vessel treasure? No one understood for ages, but one guy made the decision to find out. What was the true value of Ouida's recovered treasure? But once the Ouida went down, some individuals, it's not completely clear who they are, thought it had more than 4.5 tons of gold and silver, worth 120 million US dollars today. If accurate, Sam Bellamy would have been recognized as the greatest successful pirate of all time, or at least of that era, if this were true. Leaving aside the fact that the Ouida was not a mystical vessel with infinite storage room, a la the TARDIS from Doctor Who, it is true that Barry Clifford's salvage operation did turn up typical pirate loot. Almost 15,000 silver and gold coins have so far been found. They are priceless, yet in no way come close to being valued at 120 million US dollars. The legend continues, Bellamy's effect and legacy. Captain Samuel Bellamy's reputation has persisted for generations, despite his brief and turbulent career. Helping to define the public perception of piracy and providing the basis for innumerable stories of adventure and good fortune. Luida's wreck was mostly neglected in the years that followed until it was unearthed in the 1980s by a group of underwater archaeologists. Since then, the Ouida has undergone one of the most in-depth studies of any pirate shipwreck in history offering fresh perspectives on Bellamy and his crew's lives and times. Numerous fictional works, including the popular Pirates of the Caribbean series and the classic Treasure Island book by Robert Louis Stevenson, have been influenced by Bellamy's legacy. Bellamy has been portrayed in popular culture as a daring hero, a cunning villain, and everything in between. Adding to our interest in the men who sailed the high seas in quest of adventure and money during the golden age of piracy, the story of the Pirate's Code, a system of unwritten laws and customs that reportedly established pirates' behavior on the high seas, is probably Bellamy and his crew's most lasting legacies. The Pirate's Code is still a potent representation of the ideal of liberty and equal rights that the pirates stood for to many individuals, both in their own time and in ours, even if historians disagree over its provenance and veracity. Although he had a reputation as a merciless pirate, Bellamy was also well-liked by both his crew and his prisoners due to his wit, enticement, and personality. In Easton, Massachusetts, where Bellamy was born and raised, a memorial honoring the Ouida and his crew is located in a nearby park. The story of Captain Samuel Bellamy and his crew ultimately reflects our everlasting attraction to the notion of the rogue, the rebel, and the intrepid traveler. Their tale services as a reminder of the myth's continuing power and the ways in which the past may influence how we see the present. Six further bones were discovered in a 21-year-old mudstone in February 2021. We're hoping that one of these belongs to Bellamy once again. As of yet, nothing has been spoken of. Sam Bellamy, a notorious pirate, may have more surprises. The amazing trip through the fabled story of Captain Samuel Bellamy and his brave escapades at sea has finally come to a close. Bellamy's narrative has enthralled and influenced us from his earliest years as a sailor to his notorious career as a pirate. We're left in awe with a newfound understanding of the spirit of adventure that motivated Bellamy and his crew as we say goodbye to this famous person. Now let's go on to our next fantastic journey and get on board. No one can predict where our adventure will lead us next. We look forward to sharing them all with you. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.